Miss Caitlin, otherwise known as Agent 55, and today you will be learning how to take and lift fingerprints. To complete this task, you will require the following. A pencil, two sheets of paper, an index card, a small brush and some cocoa powder, scotch tape, and a magnifying glass may also be helpful. First, you're going to trace each of your hands onto a piece of paper. We're going to do both hands because fingerprints from different hands and fingers aren't always the same, even if they belong to the same person. And be sure that you label which hand is which and which finger is which. In order to have a full fingerprint database to examine prints from, you'll need fingerprints from all 10 fingers of each person you wish to examine. from our fingers off so that we can label them on here. To do that, we're going to create our own ink pad. We're going to use our pencil, but if you have ink, you can use that as well. You're going to color very hard on one of your sheets of paper. This is going to create an ink pad that we can then rub our fingertips into to lift prints off of our fingers. Once you have your ink pad ready to go, you're going to take one of your fingertips and rub it against all of the pencil lead that you've just scribbled. And you'll see that the pencil lead is going to stick to your finger. Now, once you've done that, we're just gonna take a piece of tape and gently place it over the finger that we've just inked up. We're gonna press it down gently, and then we're going to lift it up. And you'll see that your fingerprint is now on this piece of tape so now you want to match the fingerprint that you've just taken to the correct hand and finger it came from. So this came from my left hand and it came off my pointer finger. So I'm going to put that on my chart, press it down, and there you go. So to do this, you're going to repeat this step for all 10 of your fingers and also anybody else that you wish to examine. So when it's finished, you'll have something that looks like this, a full fingerprint database. You can go ahead and pause the training until you've done this, but make sure that you've done all of the fingerprints that you wish and that you've labeled everybody's fingerprints. You wouldn't want to accuse the wrong person. So now that we have our extensive fingerprint database, we are going to move on to how to lift and examine fingerprints. So to do this, you're going to pick a smooth surface that someone you know might have recently touched. This could be a drinking glass, a remote control, a doorknob, a mirror, or even a window. When we touch objects, the natural oils from our skin transfer to the objects and leave a faint impression of the fingerprints, just like we saw on the lead and the tape. These faint impressions can be dusted for and lifted using a brush and some powder, which is what we're going to do. So, to dust for fingerprints, you're going to use your brush and your to carefully apply cocoa powder over the object where fingerprint might be. For training purposes, you can also ask someone to leave some fresh prints for you to find. To do that, you would rub your hands together. This is going to bring the oils from your hand to the surface, and then press onto an object. Now we have our fingerprint. I'm going to take my brush, and you don't need a whole lot of cocoa powder, and you're just going to carefully brush over where you think that print might be, and you'll start to see that the cocoa powder is going to stick to the oils in the fingerprint, and it will soon be visible. So once you can see your fingerprint, we're going to take our tape and gently place it over where we can see the fingerprint. I'm just gonna blow away some of the excess cocoa powder, so there's my fingerprint. And you're going to be, want to be very careful when you're putting down the tape. So then you're going to lift up your tape, press it onto your index card, and now you should have a fingerprint that you can analyze. Now this might take some practice to get used to not smudging the fingerprint or moving it either when you're pressing the tape down or moving it onto the index card. So once you have a fingerprint that is easy to see on your index card, you're going to examine it against your fingerprint database. Now fingerprints typically have three main patterns. So they are a whirl, a loop, 
and an arch. So you can see here that the whirl looks just like its name, it looks like a swirl. The loop is a little loop. And then the arch is just, it looks like a big bridge. So those are the three main types of fingerprints that people have. So now that we know that, and we have our fingerprint database, this is when it's really useful to get your magnifying glass out and compare the print you've taken to the prints that you have. Can you identify whose fingerprint you have lifted? If you'd like an extra challenge for your training, can you identify which hand and finger it came from? And there you have it, how to take and lift fingerprints. Now that you've learned how to examine fingerprints, here is your clue for the week. When Tails was examining the security footage, he noticed the library's delivery room camera was blocked off during the weekly library poetry slam. This has to be when the medals were taken. This means that anyone who was at the poetry slam could not have been the thief. Bad news, only one mug was found after the event, but good news, there was a fingerprint on it. Whoever the fingerprint belonged to could not have committed the crime. Match the fingerprint evidence to the fingerprints of the suspects to eliminate a suspect from the case. You have one week to solve the clue and help Tails advance in solving the case of the missing metals. Good luck, agents.